Welcome back, folks, to yet another episode of the Unpaid Wrestling Podcast, heard on YouTube and UniqueDivas.com forward slash forums. We are excited today to announce that we will be doing our very first themed episode. This is going to be an experimental run, so please bear with us. We got our three-person panel again. We have, once again from our site, we have Latin Dragon and our King of Strongcast. Welcome, gentlemen. Hey, how you doing? Yo. Okay, thank you very much. And our topic for the, our very first themed episode is Top 5 Divas of the Attitude Era, circa 1996 to WrestleMania X7. We'll be check, checking in in six categories. We have overall in-ring ability, those who have best mic skills, Top 5 faces, Top 5 heels, the hottest of the Attitude Era, and of course, the hottest overall that had all of the above, in-ring ability, mic skills, etc., and how this goes is we're each going to give our number five spots, and one person will explain why they had that person in that spot, and then we'll have a brief discussion about it, agree or disagree, and then the next person will give their five, unless that's the same, unless they have the same person in the same spot. So, shall we begin? And if any interruptions, I've got my axe. So. <laughs> I will get my shock stick. Oh, God. Okay, so shall we start with uh, in-ring ability, shall we? Not if you want to start there, but I'm going last, so. You're going last? So, okay. So it's, between, go? so it's between you two. Who goes first? I can go first if, uh, unless anyone objects. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So number five for my in-ring ability is China, believe it or not. I know some people give China a bad rap, but the reason I got China in number five is because although her in-ring ability was somewhat limited. She was the first diva to actually mix it up with the guy. You remember her feud with Jeff Jarrett. She also feuded with Chris Jericho for a little bit. And of course she feuded with Hardcore Holly for a little while as well. And of course the first and so far only female Intercontinental Champion. So though her move set was not exactly the greatest, but she did get the job done and she mixed it up. She wasn't afraid to mix it up with the guys. Thoughts? Um. I would agree. On, I would agree on that for my, my number five too, because like you said, she was on, she was the first ever female to actually go one on one with the men. She wrestled Triple H. She wrestled Mankind. She had one match with the Undertaker, but that was more of a triple threat with with Triple H. She wrestled The Rock, which was that handicap match with um with um her and um Mr. Ass. And she even wrestled Mr. Ass. She wrestled. Road Dog, Xbox. She she wrestled a good amount of people. She she even fought um Albert, the Radicals, Test, um a lot of Val Venus. So like, like definitely China was the first ever um female and I and if the WWE allowed Beth Phoenix would probably been been the next one because she's just um, like a female version. I'm um, I mean like the same exact like China. And the rumors had that when Nicole Bass came in. She was supposed to have a feud with China, but I guess something happened with Nicole Bass and um, uh, the Brooklyn Bra- the Brooklyn Brawler that um, that wind up ruining Nicole Bass's um chances. But China China's definitely number five in my book. Was like you said, she was the first ever female Intercontinental Champion. She was a a World Rumble World Rumble c- c- female con- the first ever World Rumble woman to be in there. She wrestled. She wrestled twice in the King of the Ring. She she did better in the first one where she um, had a match with the Road Dog, but she she was basically good. And she had an amazing storyline with Eddie, the late great Eddie Guerrero, with the Mamacita, and um, those storylines with Eddie was just oh man, that was so cool. But yeah, I would have to agree. China would definitely be my five um, right there too. So both of you are dead wrong because my number five is Luna Vachon. Actually, I knew the rank higher, but but proceed. Uh, why why would it, number five? Well, because there's no. I probably should rank her higher, but the reason I have her down there is because during the period, um, she didn't really wrestle a lot. She was more personality in all, and when it was all said and done, but she did. Uh, Make her make her impact uh, briefly uh, uh, by putting over Sable was the one that made Sable, and I don't think that's arguable at all. If not for that feud, I 
honestly don't think Sable would have uh, achieved the stardom she did. Yeah, not much. You know, she's number five, so there's not really a whole bunch to say about you know about about, about, about what she did in ring. Because like I said, she was more personality. She, after after she had put over Sable, she was stuck with uh the the, the goddamn oddities. <laughs> Wearing, wearing whatever the fuck '90s ravers wore back then, and then, and then she had the, uh, but she did have the uncanny ability to scare me. And I don't mean her, but whatever that pairing of her and Goldust did to Goldust. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. What is formerly known as Goldust? Whatever the hell that period of Goldust was, that was the, that creeped that me the hell out. That was just freaky. Like what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> well, I guess it was supposed to be creepy because, you know, they were heels. You know, Goldust gimmick was being more, like, flamboyant, like how Adrian, Adrian Adonis was back in the, like, um, in the 80s. was just, like, he's supposed to be flamboyant and touching himself and freaking out people. Like, he freaked out Ahmed Johnson and Roddy, Roddy Piper. So Luna was supposed to be almost as freaky and weird as Goldust was. No, that was no that area you just mentioned was when he was with Marlena when in the Attitude Era when he and Terry broke up or divorced or whatever the story goes. That's when he was wearing like like spiked bras or God knows what else. He had multicolored face paint. It's like oh yeah it, yeah yeah. The artist formerly known as Gold Dust. It, it is it is something else. And if you kids don't know what we're talking about, YouTube it. Or Google it. <laughs> he come out with a ball gag in his mouth and everything. Yep. Yes. That just made you scratch your heads, like holy shit. And, and the, but the sad thing is, she that that was during this time. It was her most popular. She was at her most popular by far, but she never won the women's title. Even, that's the unfortunate even, thing. Even just very briefly, and that's the sad thing about it. It's um yeah um, I would um, for for me the reason why I didn't put um, like Luna in in my top five was because she was never. Like, like she was always the pusher. Never, she was. She never got a push. Yet she always pushed the people who fought against her. She fought. Um, she pushed Medusa or like Alondra Blaze when she was champion, and then she still continued to push Medusa in WCW. She pushed um, Sable into a top, con, um, a top baby face. She was always um, the go-to girl to get somebody to be pushed ahead of her. She was always a, but basically she's almost like how Ziggler was um when he was the heel. He was always mm, pushing people, even though like he should be the one being pushed, you know. And but Lu that was Luna's job, and that's what she did so amazingly well. And she made she can easily make you hate her while making you love the person she's fighting. And that's one of the best things about Luna, and I love Luna for that. But it's just like she never got the. A title run, which she should have, and she never got the the respect from a lot of people, which um, um, her fans do respect her, like myself, because I love Luna Vachon. I have her matches in my computer, but it's just like for um, for the other people, they don't. When you think the best female wrestlers, you, they don't normally say Luna. WWE hasn't even put her in the Hall of Fame, fame yet, which she right, should, um, should rightfully be. And that goes into my number four. I actually had Luna at number four, so. Oh, okay. No, they, for those very, for those very same reasons, uh, not that's be not because she was popular, or not because she was a champion, but because she could make anyone look good. And like we mentioned, like our King of Strongcast mentioned, she is what made Sable relevant. Like if Sa if she didn't have that feud, she wouldn't be where she was at that time. So. She might not have been the best or the championship material in WWE's eyes, but just for the fact that she could, she could make anyone look good, that's why I had her at number four. That's why I had her a little higher. And she and she lived her gimmick. I mean, yeah, she you, was batshit you, you, crazy, but the fans what? loved it. You 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 you've, you've got to have some sort of level of like just charisma to pull off that that entire ensemble. Absolutely. So, it's like this. Basically, Mickey James when she was the lesbian thing or. Or Victoria, they basically looked up Luna for her craziness and wacko persona to try to like emulate her or be kind of close to close to her in their psycho gimmicks. 
This is like any diva or female wrestler that has a weird, crazy, like, I'm psycho type of gimmick, they always looked up Luna because Luna was the original psycho bitch. And that's what made her one of the best female wrestlers because even in the ring, she still had that psycho bitch like persona. Like, and even in her promos of how she speaks, she speaks so... Like, like you can have nightmares just by her talking. Yeah, Mike works in the next category. We're talking about in-ring ability right now. Oh, no, 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 no. I know, but I'm just saying, like, just like... Even in the ring, she plays to her persona. She plays to who she is. And that's what made her amazing. Yeah, so like I said, she lived the gimmick. I mean, through how yeah. she acted, through how she dressed. Mm-hmm. It wasn't it wasn't just I have to act psycho. She went I got to look it. I have to you know, I have to make people legit believe it. Mhm. And, and, well. that, and, and that's when and that when people say, "Oh, Mickey had the greatest psycho gimmick." Please. Oh, no. You <laughs> Oh, no, no. You, no, 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 no. <laughs> you you're clearly too young child. Yes. Just sit <laughs> uh, just sit back down and get under the learning tree. They both have their own unique spin on it, but Luna is definitely the queen psycho of WWE Divas. Yeah, be like, let me teach you of a woman that really shows the psychoness. Yeah, sit down, children, we shall tell you a story, and you will have nightmares <laughs> for it. I miss her. Uh, rest in peace. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sir Dragon, uh, you're number four for In Ring Diva. Uh, in Ring Diva would have to be. I think number four would go to. I would have to go with uh, Lita. It's just like that. Just, that I, sorry, sorry to interrupt. That's my that's my number four too. So, okay, uh, let's explain. I'll go ahead. It's just like she she was never really good like like Matt wise, but she was the first true female that can fly. That'd be like like she basically um was like, hey, women can fly too and do crazy. Crazy shit, and basically like, like how Rey Mysterio was, but no, she's not like Rey Mysterio, like 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 all the frantic and all the like Rey Mysterio, how how he was, but she was like she can was like the first female that you can do a hurricanrana, flying head scissors, or actually the first female that would actually go on top on the top turnbuckle and fly, and basically that's what made her. Hugely popular because of she was in team, team Extreme or Team No 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 she was with um Papa Chulo. It's in Rios. Yeah 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 it's a Rios. Yeah I call him Papa Chulo because that's how that's how he was. But <laughs> he, you know she did the top rope her Kamana the top rope moonsault and people would be like holy shit she's the real deal and she even like did it to like guy like did a her Kamana and moonsault on guys which basically be like oh. Now she's now she's good, and with the red hair and oh man, she she was definitely amazing. In her ECW days, she wasn't as good, but when she got to the WWE, she was she was amazing and slowly improved and did great. Like in her match with Trish Stratus, she nearly killed herself doing a freaking suicide dive. Wrong era. Yeah, oh man, I feel, oh, I'm just like, oh my god, she must have broke her neck or her back, but she looked like she did a scorpion before, um, oh, ugh, it cringes every time I remember that, but uh, she was still an amazing athlete and, and deserves her Hall of Fame recognition. Well, the reason she's number four in mine is because, well, I'm from among the same reasons that Dragon pointed out, but because she wasn't that great in the ring. I don't, you know, no matter how much people celebrate her, if you go back and watch her matches, she wasn't that great in the ring. She was, not, she, she was pretty sloppy on, on in, in all honesty. But maybe that's but, maybe that's because of, of you know the high standard set now nowadays. But she could fly. There was no doubt. She's influential. That's why she's on my list because you you can't look at women from that era and not recognize her influence she she wasn't very good in ring uh, at all she was she she's um painfully looked like she's hurt a few people and a lot of people ragged on her back then like very sloppy but oh, but, but but she was 
she was influential, like I said. That's why she makes my top five. Uh, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, say what um, you said. And every time you keep stopping, I thought you were gonna, you were gonna stop, but it's just like, and yeah, I I agree with you. She was never really a good mat based wrestler, or like can actually perform normal moves like correctly. But yeah, like she was in, inspirational because she was uh, like I said, like the first true female luchador. But like, like, like you said, wrestling wise, she's she's not like a mat technician. She's more of a high flyer. So I definitely agree with you that she couldn't wrestle, like do moves to like perfection. But she's basically influ- influential, inspirational of of like flying. And she even brought, she of- she brought a different style of what she did. And and, 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 and that's is- what and that's what the women of the era. Represented more than anything, it was diversity. You had yes. your you had your flyers, your powerhouses, your you had your mat base, you had uh, your veterans, you had your your not so good, but all you you could always a place where where they were. You could you could recognize who was the good wrestler and who wasn't. Like yeah. who 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 depended on their spots and and whatnot. Lido, yeah. I'm I, I know I'm gonna get it. And, and, crap load of this from from the form but Lita reminds me of uh, Naomi. Naomi reminds me of Lita, sorry. In that Naomi relies on her spots much like Lita did. I don't consider Naomi a great wrestler. She's better than Lita was but she's not great. She, she, she depends all on her spots to get her through. Basically, basically Lita is the female version of Jeff Hart and Hardy. Because Jeff Hardy is a spot monkey, and Lita was a spot monkey also. Um, I don't see Naomi much of a, uh, as a spot monkey. I don't see any real diva in there that was a true luchador like Lita. The only closest diva I can see being close to Lita would be Alyssa. Would be Alyssa Ble- Alexa Bliss because she's basically if you see her matches like her recent one with Carmella, she's basically a, luch- a fi- the white luchadora. Because she does her karanas and all that. Her top, her finisher is like like a like a weird corkscrew moonsault type of deal. But like, like I don't see Naomi as a spawn monkey. I see more Alyssa Bliss, more like Lita. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying Naomi is Lita. I'm saying that the, their styles are similar in that they both rely heavily on their spots. Naomi oh, yeah. has to, Naomi has to get in her head scissors. And we have to, you know, get in her butt bump. And majority of her match, she doesn't really wrestle. It's her, it's her opponent that wrestles. And that's what I'm saying. But yeah, the, the reason Lita's at number four in mind is simply because you, uh, you can't go and, uh, and not acknowledge and recognize her her influence. She brought a whole different style, and it changed everything about women in WWE. Yeah, and I didn't really have lead on my list, unfortunately, as much as I love her. But uh, at this time, the Attitude Era, she, her matches at the time were basically considered gimmick matches with Trish, basically. But yeah, like we've all like we've all agreed on, she was very influential and she brought a different style that was very unseen by women's wrestling. So she she was very inspirational, but unfortunately, she didn't make my list. All right, so we're moving on to number threes. Uh, my number three, this might be, I don't know what this one will generate, but uh, my number three was actually Molly Holly. Uh, well, on on my list, but not number three. I put Molly up there because one, she actually was trained to be a wrestler and, mm-hmm. she, and, she, had, and she also pulled off some, she was a powerhouse and she could also pull off a top rope or top rope move, uh, the Molly go round, I believe it was called. Mm-hmm. And you don't see that, you didn't see that very often unless you Molly was, she just had a very unique look and a very nice gimmick, and the fans just loved and she just knew how to get the job done in the ring. So that's why I got Molly at number three. Okay, well, since, you have, since we have Molly, I'll just say Molly is number one on mine. So, and I'll say it why. I'll say it right now, and I'm, I'm probably going to get crapped on our opinion, but there, yeah. has, there has been, ever since, there hasn't been a woman in WWE that's been a better rust pure wrestler than molly holly none has come along that has, has outdone her as a pure 
just wrestler. Well, the she, co- the- she she just when you go back and watch her matches, and person my favorite time of her is cousin Molly. I I loved her since her debut, and just everything about her that she does in ring is just smooth. There's no errors in what she does. She knows what she's doing, and she can. She could, I'm sure she could carry a broomstick to it, a damn, well, at least a four-star match if she want, if they let her go. And since NXT is bringing back and um, veterans, I hope Triple H, I hope she comes back maybe for a one-off match. I want, I'd die to see her and Sasha go at it. It, it. That'd be a dream of mine just to see that happen. But as like I said, easily the best women's wrestler that hasn't been touched by anyone that's come along. Well, but like the closest one currently right now, um, technical wise, is Natalia Nahar because come on, she's a heart. But like, but I'm, I understand what you're saying. Saying and for me, um, Molly Holly is number two because for me, I watched Molly Holly in WCW when she was Mona, and I even watched her in the independent circuit when she was Starla Sexton, and she was basically trained by Dean Malenko and Malaya Hosaka. In fact. She battled Malaya Hosaka constantly in the independent circuit and in WCW. And then when she became a member of Randy Savage's um, female clique with um, um, Gorgeous and, George, and Medusa. Gorgeous George and Medusa. It's she, madness. Yeah, yep. yeah, she actually you know, like went on the top rope and did um, like her basically did what Lita did in w, in WWE, but Mona did it first in WCW, which people probably won't believe me, but I watched both things, so I know. Before she became a wrestler, she was actually a power lifter, though she she did have power, power of her movesets. She would never really showed her power, power like in her offense, but she did have power. She in WCW, she was basically supposed to be the future of women's wrestling, um, because she she was supposed to be like um she wrestled a lot of indie women like um Little Genie, Lexi Fife. Um, Didi Venturi, and then she even wrestled Medusa a couple times, and she was supposed to be what the women's wrestling is for the future. And when WCW died, she came in, like you say, as um, Mo- Molly Holly, and she wrestled Trish Stratus when Trish was like green, and she wrestled RTC's Ivory. And um, I think when I think she should have gotten a um, a title run when she was a babyface, but when she turned heel. And did the the I'm pure white as a driven snow type of gimmick with her big ass, <laughs> and she became more technically sound and vicious. That was the Molly Holly we all like know and love, and she should be in the Hall of Fame sooner or like sometime sooner or later, but she won't because she because WWE is gonna give it to like Sable or somebody else. But Molly Holly was was. And is and probably forever will be one of WWE's greatest technical sound wrestlers that will never get her respect that she rightfully deserves. I disagree with that. I think Molly will be in the Hall of Fame at some point. Oh, yeah. I, I do agree Sable will probably go in before her because, well, she's the Playboy and she's married to Brock and all that other fun stuff. But I think Molly will be in there at some point. She deserves it. And she's... She has a good relationship with WWE, like, and you don't hear any bad things about her. Like, you don't oh, no. see her on Skype flaunting herself like other <laughs> yes. like other Hall of Fame divas. But I think Molly's time will come at some point. I think she deserves it, rightfully so. She's had a long career in wrestling, so not only like WCW and the Indies, and she's a former women's champion. So, hell, let me put it this way, all right? If Drew Carey, I know it's a different category, but if Drew Carey can be in the goddamn Hall of Fame, why not Molly Holly? Uh, yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. We're just finally getting Randy Savage in there, man. So I think Molly's time will come soon. So she, she Molly Holly is the one person that like, you can find stories about every other star in WWE. Molly, and it's and it's you go watch any shoot interview where they mention her. She is the one person no one has a bad thing ever to say about. Oh yeah, true. Not true. one Everybody person. Not not one person has a bad thing to say about that woman. And that is so. Exactly. She's very respectful, and a lot of people have a lot of respect for her. Man, again, rightfully so. She just got a bad. She just got some bad gimmicks, like the big ass gimmick, like we mentioned. She does not mm-hmm. have a big ass. Like 
Honestly, you want to see a big ass? Rikishi has a big ass. <laughs> Molly does not. <laughs> that's yeah, not but... our topic for another day. Should you get to said... the WWE? That'll be our, that'll be another topic for another day. That'll be an even bigger list. Yeah, I don't know. If there's if there's one just miscue on her and Turker is that um, that she didn't get a title run when she was a babyface. Yeah, yeah, because Molly's gimmick was gold. Yes. And her her little uh, Romeo and Juliet type romance with Spike Dudley. Come on, man, that was enjoyable. Oh, um, oh, she was, more ver- she was like... versatile. Let's put it that she, way. She was the perfect fit to to put beside Crash. Just just those two playing off each other. If you go back and just watch anything they did, it was just such a dynamic. They worked so well off each other. Yeah, they're both, I, both fun and goofy as hell, and then they got hardcore as the proverbial hard ass. It's like, what was I saying? Really? I'm related to these people? <laughs> yeah. it was like you, it's like you had these two overly chippy uh, family members, and then the hardcore is just stoic, like, really? This is my family? It's like, oh, God. Damn it. it was, I must it be was, adopted. It was such a it was such a perfect tree. I wish it was, it, yeah. that they did more with that. Cause the, the, crash uh, coming out, crash coming out, the scale and being announced at four hundred pounds. I oh, miss Crash. Oh. God bless him. Oh man! I'm, oh, oh but, remember, wait. remember the Mighty Molly gimmick? Yeah, with the hurricane, that was also fun. Yeah, she could do. She could take anything she was given and make it work. That's how versatile Molly was. And only in Toronto did she get clobbered with a Dutch door. Ah, uh, Christian, and 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 it was by a Canadian too that did it. <laughs> ah, Christian, yeah, sneaky bastard. The hardcore title melee. But yeah, she's number one on my list because easily the best in-ring female WWE this has ever had. Nice. Yeah, so that was, my, that was a lengthy discussion. My number three, uh, Greg, and your number three. Um, what did, what did I admit? Oh, wait, I said Molly was number two in mine. I think right. Yep. I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. Number three for me. I don't know why, but I would have to say Jazz because she was like the, the straight out brawler of the of the of the Divas division. Like she can, like she does, and she does have a wrestling experience because she did have like mass skills, and she was married to the Red Dog on Rodney, Rodney Mack. Mack. Yep. Rodney yes. Mack. Yeah, the Red Dog. Um, but it's just like um, she wrestled in ECW. She was basically the baddest bitch in ECW. Um, that's that's when the Paul Heyman ECW, not the freaking Vince McMahon one. But like, and then she came into WWE and had a long time feud with Trish Stratus, which basically, thanks to Jazz, made Trish even more lovable because Jazz basically kicked the living crap out of her, making people be like, "Come on, Trish, fight back." And Jazz was the one that debuted the the Beth Phoenix um the bitch clamp or the glam slam, and oh man, Jazz was a definitely mm, like badass bitch, and that was like a cool mm, like cool thing to see. Like she even beat the crap out of Jacqueline. Was the woman that beat the crap out of men. Like remember WCW when Jacqueline beat the crap out of any man that Kevin Sullivan beat. Oh man, Jazz was definitely good in my book. So as I, I would say, Jazz. Yeah, I I just let you know, Jazz is number three on mine too, yeah, for all the same reason. I mean, if you want a woman that, uh, you you want an intimidating woman, do you send Jazz out? I mean, Jazz is scary. I mean, Victoria is is was uh, Victoria was tried to follow up on her, but she was never Jazz. I don't care how no, scary they how scary they tried to make Victoria. She was never Jazz. Jazz Jazz was. She punch you in the mouth and then and then just whip your ass. I mean, it's like this. Jazz was never a face in the in WWE. Victoria was a face and she had the get dancing thing. Jazz was never once a face in W in WWE. The only time she was a face was when um she fought Mickey James um when the ECW revival or something like that. That was the only time. And Jazz I was faced. and I was pissed at that. I was pissed that Jazz was never. Never got a face run because I loved face jazz in ECW. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. I like I forget what the movie is called, but her finisher as a face, the hike she gets on that that face plant, ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I and it, and it was and I and another reason I'm sad that she didn't get a face run is because her offense as a face completely changes. Yeah, so, she, so she basically has two different 
two uh, vastly different move sets. She is a completely different person as a face instead of a heel. Yeah, her and, her, her, and, her and there's not very many female wrestlers in which you can actually say that about them. Usually their offense as a heel and a face is predominantly the same, but Jazz is completely different, and that's what I love about her. Yeah, her, when she was a face, her finisher was called the Jazz Stinger, which was basically um, the X Factor, but with amazing, like you said, amazing the ability of her height when she nails it. And she does it, and she did it to men. She didn't do it to women because the only real women in ECW that she fought was um, Lita, and that was extremely green Lita. But like she did that to, she did the Jazz Stinger to men. And that was just like, oh my god, I don't want to fuck with her. <laughs> so the, jazz, the one moment jazz won me over is, and the first, and it was the first one I really took notice of her is when Tommy Jr. pile drived her on barbed wire. Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, this woman is fucking bad, fucking ass. When she did, it, I was like, holy shit! And then that's what the moment I took notice of her. And when she came to WWE, I was like, this woman is gonna wreck shit, and she, that's what she did. Yeah, yeah, she she made her debut by kicking Trish's ass. <laughs> so, and when she did that, he's like, "Oh crap, things are gonna get real." <laughs> uh, and things got real. She became champion in her second or third match against Trish, I think. So, yeah, do you know she was a big deal because she debuted at the 2001 Survivor Series, mm-hmm. and and she was never, and she was never ever out of title contention. Like, if Trish was out of title contention. Um, somehow Jazz was still feuding with her, or Jazz mm-hmm. was feuding with someone that was still involved in the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she, she feuded with Lita, she feuded with Victoria when she was a babyface and a champion. She even had matches with Molly Holly, making, because, and because even though the WWE pushed Trish, Trish and Lita, WWE had amazing background wrestlers who they, who they continued to push. They had like freaking Victoria, Molly, Jazz, and Jacqueline yeah, but is what, what I love about how behind they treated Jazz is that she was always treated as a big deal. They never let you really forget until she got injured, and then, and then sadly it derailed her career. But before that injury, she was always, always in contention. Mm-hmm. And and the, I feel that's what WWE doesn't do anymore. Is that, is that, when, um, someone when you take someone out of title contention. They, they they seemingly fall down the card. They're they're not treated as still important. WWE only nowadays goes. You're only important if you're involved in the title. Back then it wasn't like that. It's like if you're not involved, in the t- you're still important because because you know you you're gonna go back into title contention. Like they say, Jazz is badass. We're gonna keep treating her as such. She will never fall down the card. I know she. She was like one of the women that actually had hardcore matches. She had it against, like on the bubble. Remember the when the hardcore title was twenty four seven, and with Crash Holly, even the freaking women were going after it. <laughs> like Jazz, I think Jazz was hardcore champion once, and, and like Ter- Terry can... was Terry was hardcore champion. A random Godfather Ho was hardcore champion. Trish was hardcore champion. Yeah, Molly, mighty, mighty, mighty. Mighty Molly was hardcore champion, and then Hurricane stole it from her. <laughs> no, Christian stole it from her. She stole it from Hurricane. Oh yeah! Oh oh yeah! Yeah yeah! Hurricane got it, and then yeah, you're right, you're right. But she, she got oh. hit with the, she got hit with the Dutch door. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Christian! Yeah yeah yeah. Oh. But, but yeah, Jazz is number three on mine. Just baddest bitch, and I, outside of probably Karma, there there hasn't been one as bad as Jazz. Yeah, just karma. And that's just based on sheer size. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Next, moving on to uh, my number two one. Uh, this might be a little bit of a surprise. I got uh, Jacqueline on as my number two. Okay. Mainly because, mainly because she was a journey woman, and she's been she bounced all over the place. Indies, WCW, uh, I think Smoky Mountain, I think she was in for a yeah, while. Yeah, she was, she was a yeah. world traveler. Yeah, US, she, USWA, Japan. Yeah, man. Like, she oh, actually... LPWA. You know, do I have to get the shot stick? Again, sorry. <laughs> Again, like I mountain. said, she was a journey woman. She tra- she's been all over, and she, yeah, she probably got saddled with a lot of crap gimmicks, but uh, she did well for herself. She's former women's champion, and 
She was one of the few at the time that could actually carry a match, and she also had a few runners with some of the guys. Uh, Hervina comes to mind, uh, Harvey Wilkelman dressed in drag. Oh, oh, God. And again, kids, we are not making this shit up, and if you don't believe us, look it up. That was the time when the Divas slowly started to die. Yeah, before the resurrection, um, Trish, Lita, and Victoria, and all them, so... But yeah, Jacqueline was my number two because she's been around. She was around for a long time, and she's can definitely hold her own with anyone and anyone, anyone and everyone. So she'd be an honorable mention. She's not my number two, but honor, honorable mention. Yeah. Well, hey. I said number two was. I said my number two was Molly. So uh, so yeah, we're moving on. So my number two is uh. Well, it should come as no surprise. It was it was a debate between her, uh, my number two, and Jacqueline, and I went with Ivory as number two. Okay, I had Ivory as number one, but I'll explain it. But go ahead. Uh, what does it say about Ivory? I mean, she's. I guess um, I'm not familiar with her pre WWE. I know she was. Uh, oh, I know she. I, I I know she was in and uh, Wow. Yes, uh, that right. that's the most notable thing I know about oh, no, no, her no, 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 no. pre WWE no. career. She, she was part yeah, of. Hey, hey, does he have okay. to get the shock stick? No, okay. no kidding. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just correcting. She was a part of Glow, not Wow, but okay, well, it's, it's it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Was just, wow was just a rebranded Glow. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. But that title correct? It was Glow. <laughs> But the uh, reason she's number two is because uh, of how her her entire career path. She starts as D'Lo Brown's girlfriend, which really, uh, you, it, we, when you're starting as D'Lo Brown's girlfriend, there's you're kind of failing upwards from then on. No, nothing against D'Lo, you know, nothing against the king of the head shaker, but just... <laughs> Just her overall career growth. She goes from D'Lo Brown's girlfriend to, um, I, I consider her the second best in running worker next uh, to Molly. Uh, just a woman that can carry and just about any woman, any woman to a halfway mm-hmm. de- decent match. I believe she's wrestled Sable a few times. Um, to, yeah, she wrestled, she wrestled Sable twice when Sable was a heel. Yeah. That's what I thought. And she carried Sable to some pretty decent matches. And But let's be honest. The reason she's number two here is, is, her, I, is her RTC run. <laughs> she put in insane work during that time. I mean, to go from what she was to that, to unreal. Because she was, um, I don't want to use the word, but she was irrelevant before that point. She was kind of just someone who feuded with Terry, you know, and didn't do anything. But that RTC run, mm-hmm. everyone took notice of her. It's like, holy shit, this is what Ivory was capable of. Because she wasn't at her best until she got that run. And it, and it's a sad state of affairs that it came so late in her career. Because if they had given her the ball, uh, just... Um, th- I don't even know how to really describe it anywhere. It's just, it's an astounding run to me. The, that's why she's at number two. And yeah, for those not, for those reasons, that's why I had her at my number one. So uh, I she can't... took anything and everything she had and made it gold. And like Jacqueline, she was a journey woman and was bouncing all over the place and had some shitty gimmicks, but eventually she found her way and yeah, became one of the better in-ring performers of the era. So yeah, that was my number one. So we covered everything from in ring so far. I did my number. One. Well, actually, I didn't say my number one. Okay. What was your number one? My, mine, mine was Ivory too, because like, she she was the wrestling journey woman. She wrestled like in Glow as Tina Ferrari with um, uh, with Ashley Carter, and she had like the the Hollywood oh I'm I'm rich but I'm a baby face type of gimmick when she was in Glow. She went to. Um, Ladies Pro Wrestling Association, which is the LPWA, and she wrestled the likes of Judy, Judy Martin and Lelani Kai. She was a jobber, but still, she still had some skills. And then she went to like WWE, debuted as um, um, D'Lo's girlfriend, and then she was a babyface. She wrestled. She was the pusher. She basically pushed um, Sable into um, 
when she lost to Sable and she lost to like Trish when Trish ha- actually had her very first match against Ivory when she was um had had the feud with um with um when she had the feud with China and Eddie Guerrero with them when she was with Val Venus. And then Ivory um, like turned heel and she did like small like small gimmick roles like she was a part of the WCW invasion and all that but like you said her biggest her biggest and you know she became champion but like, just like you said there like her biggest accomplishment within the WWE was the right to censor was the right to censor gimmick and when she was a champion she was basically hated because she got on when she was wrestling she was hated because she always dressed all properly hiding her breath and, you know basically wrestling like she, um she all, was, all closed up she was like all closed up and be like i hate nudity in my ring i'm gonna see you i'm gonna beat you and then censor you and basically centered every every diva wanted to kick her ass and yet they couldn't because she was the champion that was all until she had a feud with china and she basically broke like the storyline of broke china's neck and she was all happy that she broke china's neck and then China came back and beat her for the title, and that basically was kind of the downfall because we all know China should not have gotten the women's championship because no woman could have ever beaten her. But Ivory's best thing was the right to censor, and then and I think she should come back maybe as a trainer or something because when with Sarah Del Rey and her, that would be a great, a very good um, training team right there because like I said, I, Ivory is definitely like one one of the best workers because when she's in a match you know she she will lose her match but she would make her opponent look like 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 a heaven sent for the divas division she was actually a trainer she was the precursor to uh build them on oh yeah, yeah. I know that it doesn't sound like a good thing but from all <laughs> stories i've heard oh yeah, yeah you know, Bobby she, she, she she was overly harsh she slapped uh trainees you know she used it uh, bad and terrible language yeah, 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 Bobby Billiard and um, women. Bobby Billiard, if everybody knows, she was a wild girl as um Summer, and uh Lato- Latoya, a white, a white girl, Latoya Mazzola or something. Um, right now she did a little MMA, but when they those two girls try to go in, Jack, they said that Jacqueline and Ivory treated treated them horribly because um they were prettier than than those two and. I guess back then they hated the pretty girls because they knew they were going to take their position. So they treated the the prettier girls harshly. So that was like the whole story back then. Okay. All right. Next category, I think we're we're done with the in-ring ability. I guess we all got our ones. Right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Perfect. So we'll move on to the next one. Um, Mike skills. Everyone cool with that? Yeah. I'm declaring I'm going last again. (laughs) Oh, man. That's going to be hard. (laughs) <laughs> All right, uh, I can go first again unless you rather go, sir. Hey, go ahead. Mm, go ahead. You go first. All right. Uh, for for my work, my number, my number five was actually Trish, mainly because although her mic time was kind of limited at this point, but for the time that she did get, she did get her point across and wasn't nearly what it would become at this time. But again, it's an evolution process, and she got she got her point across for the most part, and the time she was given so. She worked on it as much as we could, and she slowly evolved. So that's why I got Trisha number five. Trisha's actually my number four, but uh, but since, uh, since we both have Trisha, I'll just say that um, for a majority of the same reason, she she wasn't great, but she got her point across, and uh, but she's number four in mine because it's clear who she patterned her mic work after. I mean, if you pay close attention. If you smell. <laughs> okay. But, the rock, but, it, but yeah, to sum it up, she she wasn't great. There was better. But um, I don't find her heel work as amazing as everyone else did, apparently. Maybe that's just me. But um, still, she can get her point across. And she uh, wasn't terrible, but there was always better. Which is why she's uh, number four on mine. Yeah, she, she's number five for me because like she was like the only diva that really got a lot of like mic time, and she did do she did a lot better on the mic as a heel than she did as a face. But still, um, 
she was she was um, basically the main talker of the divas division back then. So, mm, so the majority of the time, you know, Trish was gonna have the mic. So, yeah, she, she she's number five. Uh, my number five is Lita. Um, because well, like Trish, wasn't great. She was actually worse than Trish. But uh, the reason she's actually uh, number five is uh, because it's at the end of her career that she actually uh, got the mic um, more often and and her work started to improve. It, it wasn't great. It, it didn't become anything uh, better than it, uh, it should have been by that point. But go back if you... I'm, if you go back and watch ECW's One Night Stand, I believe it's 2006, um, with her Edge and Foley against Terry Funk and Tommy Dreamer, um, she cuts a, a pre-match promo, and I thought, "Hey, pretty good." You, you don't, you, we didn't get to hear her often, but um, she makes a list just because by the end of her career, she got more mic work and she got better. Not great, but. She got better by the end of her run, so this is, actually, I got I gotta acknowledge that somewhat. Actually, one one of them, one of the best mic mic that um, from her I liked was when she when she teamed up with Carlito against um, Edge and Lita. She was basically so pissed that Lita um, interrupted her um, I guess like a, a cover shoot she did for WWE that she basically dissed all over like um, Lita and. Basically, kiss Carlito, and Carlito's just like, "That was cool." <laughs> I'm just like, "Oh man, that was, um, um, I like that for more." But like, yeah, Trish, Trish could could do good on the mic, but she wasn't the best. But she could still talk, and she could still like bash on her opponents. So she was basically one of the other ideal go-to girls on the mic. She wasn't good, but she was a very decent on the mic. Yeah, we were talking about Lita at this point, but yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 Lita, I'm sorry. Yeah, his, yeah, his, yeah, Zero gave his number five. His number five is Lita. Yeah, oh, my, yeah. my number four is Trish, but Lita's number five. And also, one more thing about Lita, I felt... It's going back... This might seem weird, but I felt she was actually... I can't remember if she got any mic work in the old ECW. I believe yeah, she yeah. did. I, I believe she did, but... I felt, yeah, she yeah, was, she... I, I felt she was better on the mic then than she was in her early WWE career, which is another reason she makes my list. Yeah, she, yeah, she did, and she did have some... She was on the mic um, in her ECW. She was, like, the boy, the girlfriend of um, Danny Doring, and she played the air, the red-headed, like, yeah. airhead. Yeah, she was know, but... Miss Congeniality. Got proposed to yeah. with a condom. Got proposed to with a condom. And I'd like to so we'll put this out there to any future waifus. That's my proposal to you. So be, <laughs> so be warned. It's not gonna get any better than that, ladies. So take, take uh, what you can get. Stay away. That's all I have to say. <laughs> so yeah, so you stay away from that guy. <laughs> no, hey, hey, hey! Stay I away from Jersey. Nice. I'm the nice guy. I I would actually do it right, like properly, not with freaking condom like you, man. <laughs> Hey, that's that's how we that's how we that's how the real men do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe you Canadians. But... All right. Uh, so we're done with our fives. So I'll move on to number four. Uh, my number four was actually Luna, because we, as we discussed in the previous list, Luna was batshit crazy, and whenever she did talk, it was kind of like a screech, but it made you take notice and it just made your skin crawl. Thinking, oh god, she's talking. It's like. Oh. <laughs> Like you want to shut her up, but what she's saying makes a lot of sense. Like the other one, like Trish and all of them, she did get a lot of mic time, but when she did, it's like, oh god, make my skin crawl. But she's talking, I must pay attention. So that's why I got Luna number four. She didn't make the most. She made the most of her mic time, and she did make you take notice of what she was saying, usually with a high pitched screech. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, Luna is number um, like three for me because it was like. Um, like she was, like I said, she played her persona to a T. That even like in the ring and on the mic, like when she's on the mic, she has that like fingers, fingers on a chalkboard voice and all like like mannish, like, <laughs> like oh. but she doesn't. She 
does it to a T that you, you're going to actually understand what she's saying and her hatred and heelish attitude towards whoever she was fighting and be like, oh, man, uh, shut up. And, oh, man, she was good. She deserved a, she deserved a title run, and she never got it. I'm just... Now, that kind of upsets me, but, yeah, she definitely was amazing on the mic as her persona. So, she's number... Th- I think, yeah, she's number three for me. So, well, I covered my number four. So, right, so. And, and my number three is in the same as yours. So, so we'll circle rock around the squirrel there. All right. So again, go back to that. My number three was actually Ivory, and I mean heel heel Ivory, either pre and during RTC. Because when she was heel before the RTC, she came out and insulted all the pretty girls and. Explain why they were only getting over because they were sleeping with someone in the back or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And of course, during her RTC days, when it was she was all prim and proper and looked like she had a bug up her ass or something, she had an excellent she had excellent delivery and she made you hate her. Which as a heel, that's what you want. And during that gimmick, she did it very very well, and she was just amazing during her heel days. Ivory is is number two on my list, but. Uh... Uh, let's squirrel girl. I mean, dragon go next, and then I'll cover my number two. Well, I think I think I'm, I missed a spot. Like number four was I I three because like in her in, like right to censor, she was amazing as the evil. I'm I'm what a woman should be like. All oh, cover it up and mm, be like you should not use nudity or profanity and be like oh shut the hell up. Yeah, she was so good good like that. It's just oh man. Uh, I like that. And um I think we're at number three. Um I said um yeah. Trish was, Trish was yeah. number five, Ivory's number four, Luna's number three. Um Okay, so well you covered your Ivory, so I'll cover mine. She's uh we're on number three, right? Yep. Oh yeah, uh, Ivory's number three on mine. Just I mean well uh, what can I say? It's the same reason all the rest of you have her on your list, uh, her uh, entire RTC run. I mean, she projected the overly. I mean, we're her. It's it's a little ironic that her gimmick back then is more relatable now than it was actually then, because we're in a strong uh, feminist era right now. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. where it's like feminist is feminism that and you know, and her and her gimmick resonates all the way to now. But to project that and to get the heel heat she did was amazing. And she wasn't surrounded by terrible mic workers either. So for her to to be there and and probably recognized as the best mic worker out of all those all of all those people what it is something great. Like you have to be able to project such a gimmick that people they hate you. But she didn't do it in a way that um, it's called. You, you guys know what go away heat is, right? It's not mm-hmm. like le- it's not legit hate. Um, legit heat. It's heat what? that that people just don't want to see you. Yeah, that, yeah, like like Vicky. Yeah, she she walked that fine line where she was projecting uh, a gimmick where if if it came off just a bit more wrong. Um, it it probably wouldn't have worked on the audience. The audience would never have bought into it. But Ivory did so well that you that you started believing these could legit believe, be her real beliefs. Like I believe that um, at uh, in some part of her that I'm sure she that she was projecting her real feelings. Like maybe not to the f- full extent of the gimmick, but I have no doubt that. What she was saying uh, was um, was true to what she felt, and and not many women in the wrestling industry, let's be honest, can make you believe what they're saying that much. And she made me believe, and for that alone, she gets on my list. All right, so we're good with our threes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. So next one on number two uh, for me. Yeah, it's kind of the same as Ivory. It's my number two is Sable, but heel Sable, because Sable as a face didn't get a whole lot of mic time, but when she broke out on her own and played up as a heel, that's when she came into her own. 
And I'm not a big fan of Sable back then and her last run, but when she took that, she had the arrogant blonde bitch <laughs> character she was playing, and she just she played it very, very well. And yeah, for the time she got, and she made most of it. That whole arrogance heel, she made you hate her. Like she went from being loved to absolutely hated, and she managed to pull that off beautifully. So, and if backstage stories are to be believed, that was probably the real her. In all probably, honesty, yeah. if stories are to be believed. She had the she had the thing be like, I'm I'm the one that um, wait, what was what was the main thing? She's like, I'm, all the women want to be me, all the men come to see me or something like that. Yeah, something like yeah, that, yeah. This yeah, is she, she did, goes for Playboy. She did that like um bump and grind move when she goes after she nails you with her sable bomb. Yeah. So. Hey, and and Nikki take notice because hey, I'm not a big fan of sable. That's how you grind. Well, um, well, for me, I guess for for me, number two is Molly Holly because she did um, she did a good on Mike. Um, she did only in her in her heel persona. She was on the mic a lot, but she um, when she was on the mic as a heel, um, she basically talks about being pure as a driven snow, and she's what a real like you have to be absent, almost like a Christian. She almost had like a heelish. Christian gimmick, um, because she was all white and she were almost like all white. The only thing that was black was her her pants. When she was on the mic, she did have a heelish attitude towards her, and it's just like, um, I'm here. Um, um, I, I can't exactly say, it, but um, you have to you have to see her promos, and I kind she, of feel she was acting as a high and mighty devout vir- uh, virgin. Yeah, you know, like a high, yeah, like high and mighty, like. I'm the true woman that looks up to God, and or it's kind of I, I don't exactly know how to say it, but it's just like she can actually do good on the mic if if given the ability. And when she turned heel, and when she was a heel, that was when she was able to be on the mic a lot, and um, she she did very well. All right, my turn. Well, my number two is gonna come out of left field on this one, so because. One, no one has mentioned her yet. And for her to be on this list, I'm going to take you out of a surprise. My number two is Terry Runnels. And the reason is because, um, well, how do I explain, <laughs> how do, how do I explain um, this? Um, I'm um. trying, no, I, 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 I know the reason she but to put it out into words is you have to go back and, and watch her work during oh. um, the Val Venus Goldust feud. Where that's when she really started. They let her talk a lot, and you really got a sense of who she was. Because previously, before that, she was, she was, she sat in the chair and she smoked a cigar. That's all she did prior. Mm-hmm. But but the Goldust Val Venus feud is when she broke out, and and I'm like, we're, we're like why why is she just now being allowed to speak? Because there's only one moment she was uh, um, prior to this that she really spoke. And I don't know if you guys have watched this segment in years, but it's the arm wrestling segment between her and Sonny. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. When she was injured and she she had to play her ribs were. And that was the moment, like, this woman could talk. I was like, someone give her a mic. But then she didn't get to talk for another... Another uh, good year or so, I believe. And it was like, wh- why, why is she allowed to talk? She can, she can project her personality. I'm like, and but the, it was the Val Venus feud that got me, because I was like, she, because she, it was, and um, she was, who, uh, how was she supposed to be? She was, um, oh, she wasn't a cheating wife, I would say, but she was a, a neglected wife. That's who she was. Right. I, and I was like, I bought so into it. I'm like, this is this, like, I'm I'm pretty sure, and I was convinced in real life that Terry and Val Venus actually did it. Like Terry and Val Venus porked her. I'm sure of it. I'm convinced to this day he he he, he porked her at least once. And and when he and and during that time, if you're a female, you you, you choose between Val Venus and Goldust. And let's be honest. If you're a woman, 
the choice isn't difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <laughs> ladies. Not, nothing against old gold dust, but, <laughs> but when the man when the man quotes Rubik's cubes and how hard they are, I mean, come on now. That's <laughs> <laughs> just gross. Yeah, and and and, and then and then and then, uh, and then from there Terry just got better. I mean, she there was a reason she was the majority mic worker of PMS. She was this devilish scheming just little woman. She wasn't a Russell, but she was manipulative as hell. And and when she and when she convinced D'Lo she was pregnant and sent D'Lo in to get like tampons and whatnot, I was like I was like God damn, this is fucking hell. This woman is awesome. Was, she, she played that deceptive little woman so well, and it's, she, it's such an underrated performance from her. Mm-hmm, absolutely. Well, I'm not sure if you guys um know this, but um, like in WCW, she was like Lady Lady Alexandria. She was like a like a her gimmick was like a CEO of a of a high gimmick like um Wall Street. Forgot, she, was Wall Street. Was? she managed yeah yeah Wall yeah like Wall Street. Like um Mike Rotondo was a part of that stable, I think. Yep. And like. And then, like, like she, I think she, she wasn't much of a talker back then. But I think she did get on the mic and talk a little bit, but not as. She was basically like how Stacy Kleebler had the gimmick. Um, like late, like later on near the end of WCW when she was like the, the assistant to um Vince Russo or something. But like, yeah, she yeah, she was yeah. standard. She was standards and practices in WCW. Yeah, but but Terry did did have skills. You know, I'm not, I didn't get to hear it. Mi- but like more, um, like when she broke away from Gota, she she spoke more. But yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, and it was during that time that I that I really, they really take notice of her. And if you and it's very it's a very underrated performance. Like mm-hmm. she puts in just a a great mic work during during the period she separates from Goldas all the way to her feud with the cat. She, like she she very underrated on the mic and. I wa- I loved that that entire run of that entire uh, devious hero run of hers. It's so great, so fun. And who can forget the Terry Invitational Tournament between the Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian? Ah, the tit. Yes. <laughs> ah, the very you masterful, masterful. Guy. We saw what you did. <laughs> we saw what you did there. And then, and then her little pre-match promo before the ladder match, where she's she where she goes, this is how they're gonna climb the ladder, and Lawler is all under her like, yes, I see how that works. <laughs> please, yeah, cli- the- please climb higher, climb higher. <laughs> Lawler is Lawler is most pervy, but that yes. is but that is best though. Mm-hmm. True enough. Yeah, that's when WC, WWE was amazing. Now it's just. Uh, oh, yeah, um, she's my number two. All right, I'm going to get off my number one. And much like you, this is someone who has not been mentioned in, yet. I think uh, I know, I think we're all going to have the same number one. I have a feeling. Uh, we'll see. Uh, my number one was actually Sonny. Because oh. uh, yeah, Sonny had a lot of mic. Sonny was given a lot of mic work because cause before, cause before when Trish and all them came in, she, there was only three real divas. This was before the Attitude Era with Sonny, Sable, and Marlena slash Terry. But Sonny got the bulk of the mic work because she actually had personality. And she went regardless of who she was put with, whether it be the Body Donnas, uh, the Godwins briefly, uh, the Smoking Guns, let's get into that, uh, LOD 2000. No matter what she was doing, she get, put a mic in her hand. She actually had personality, got her point across, and she made sense of what she was talking about. Probably mm-hmm. can't say the same for that now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, with, the, with the era we're covering, Sunny got the bulk of the mic work and face heel, predominantly heel. She got her, she was definitely the best diva on the mic, in my opinion, for this era. I would have to, I would have to agree. She is num- like number one because when she was um, managing tag teams, she was always on the mic. Nobody else was really on the mic. She was part of Smoking Guns. She was on the mic. LOD. She was on the mic. Um, the Body Donnas, Chris Candido was on the mic a couple of times, but Sonny was always on the mic, and Sonny was basically the talker of every stable of, or every wrestler she had. Even in WCW and ECW, she was always like um, like the one talking. So, 
um, shooting, and for that, you have to be um, the one. She was basically the talker. It's just every every person she had under her, she always was the one with the mic. So I would have to agree. She's definitely number one. She was every time she talked, you hated her, yet you understand what she was saying because it's basically almost true. And her best one, and her best work has to be when she was part of the Body Donnas, when she was basically disrespecting every fan about being fat and how they should be, how every woman should be just like her, and I'm just like, oh, man. Yeah, so, yeah, Sunny is definitely number one, yeah. I honestly, I honestly thought you guys were going one way, but you guys completely went the other on me. Because I'm, I'm the only one with a different one. And I'm sure this is going to be argued. Especially because I, I struggled between Sunny and my number one. I was, and I, I was like, and, I, and, it, and barely I gave it to my number one. And it's Stephanie McMahon. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And, and, that. And, and the whole reason, and let me, let me say it now. The, yeah, whole, yeah, go ahead. the whole reason for her being on, on my number one on my list at all is the promo she cut the night after she turned heel. If you have not seen that, then go back and watch it to understand what I'm saying now. That was the moment. I mean, she's put, she's put on some, she's gotten better on the mic, but it was that moment that cemented her as like, just, you, nobody saw it coming. Nobody knew she had it in her. But that, mo- that promo she cut on her father, when he when she was face to face with him, and that smirk she gave him after she said Triple H turns her on, I was like, done. Like this this is it. This like just just give her the mic and let her run with it. Cause that I was like, amazing. I was blown away. I was like, this is the demure Stephanie McMahon. You know that was that wasn't very good on the mic. I was like, this is this is the real Stephanie McMahon because you can tell the difference between if you the difference in a week. Go back and watch the promos she did the week before Armageddon '99, and and the promo she did the night after. It's like two different people. It's like you can you can recognize when they scripted her, and when they actually let her talk. And I was I was like, holy crap! This I was like, why wasn't she here from the very beginning? Like, if she was brought in as Vince's devious daughter, that, I you know, that but that would overly loved her father, but was sneakingly trying to underhand him, I was like, she would have probably been declared best diva of the Attitude Era by far. My, and she's only gotten better, as we all know. Like, screw, screw, sound... You know, singing aside, God, thank God she doesn't sing anymore. <laughs> that wind beneath my ring garbage. Holy oh, shit. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. And that'll be part of our invasion story talk. Not, uh, even, not, not, yes. even, not even Stone Cold's bouncing head could save that segment. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's for that promo she cut after the, the night after Armageddon 99. That, immediately gets her on this list and that's barely edging out i'm talking it's it's one promo over the other uh as great as sunny was sunny never got a promo that led her that let her shine like that i the one promo she got was um the one where she dumped phineas that's probably her most notable one where she finally got slapped that's probably her greatest promo she's ever cut but even that pales in comparison to the Stephanie pr- the st- promo Stephanie cut. Because Stephanie ripped into her father like none. Just. And that goes as far as to say. That window of promo. From when she turned heel to. Um, I'd say. To, to WrestleMania uh, 17. That window of frame is the best mic work Stephanie has ever cut. And that's not even, and that's her as pretty much, that's her in her early years. You'd think she'd get better. But in my opinion, 
go back and watch everything she did between that time, best work of her career. And that's why she's number one on my list. That's a good pick. For that, for that, mainly for that promo alone. And if you have not listened to that one, I, it is highly recommended. It is. The thing about that promo was she was a heel, but a lot of all of what she said was true. Yep. Like with the whole sacrificing her to the Undertaker type thing and Vince being revealed as a higher power just so he could screw with Austin. It was all true. And you can just, just by looking at Vince, he knew he was screwed. He knew what she was saying. He couldn't fight what she was saying. I mean, he, he was just heartbroken by the time it was over. It's like, oh, you hate Vince McMahon, but you've got to feel sorry for him because his daughter just tore him a new one. Yep, she, and she, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, go against her because it was, it was, uh, everything she said and the reason for turning on him was logical in every manner. Yep. Like, you, you immediately go, she was completely right. And everything she did, she said. Yeah, then when she started out, she was basically a heel by association at the start, because Triple H was a heel. But over time, she slowly developed her own persona with the Billion Dollar Princess gimmick and basically taking cheap shots of whoever she could. It was basically, at that point, like, okay, we don't pity you anymore. We hate your guts. But yeah, she, she has done some amazing work since then. And yeah, it's a good number one. It's a good choice. I hate when she gets into alpha female mode, aka go back and watch Raw this past Monday. But with that early heel work, astounding. Just, just I tip my hat to to everything she did during that time. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the alpha, alpha female thing too. Like, you gotta show for let's talk about current things. To be an effective heel, you kind of gotta show some weakness because that's what made Vince good. Because he got humiliated on a constant basis by Austin, and yet he still came back with a vengeance. But he still got his in the end. So but Stephanie, yeah, she gets his, but then she reverse saying, "Yeah, I'll just brush it off. I'm still the top one. I'm still top dog." But whatever. And when she's cutting down seven footers, you're like, "How am I supposed to take these guys seriously anymore?" Exactly. As long as like she cut down one of them, she cut down both of them at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like, just, it's like you guys just hand over your nuts already. Just just give, give them to her. Just cut them off and put them in her hand. <laughs> Choke slam her ass. If not, yes, you might as well just retire. <laughs> yes, you get you can have your testicles back when I say so. <laughs> That's literally the only thing I hate about her now. Like yeah. if she if she scaled back and went um, you know, and willingly got humiliated every few weeks just to give some balance, I'd have no problem with it. But as it is now, nothing ever happens to her. No. Yeah, but basically, in the time when Je- she feuded with Jericho and Jericho humiliated her with the two two cent whore or five cent whore or something like that, it's just like. Well, he had all sorts of nicknames for her. Some. Like, the so Rock. Hard to keep track it, of all of them. it was the Rock that they did in the, the two cent whore. But yeah, yeah. she's my number. My, yeah, that's my number yeah. one. Yeah, different eras, but yeah, definitely a good pick, I think. Okay, so want we'll to continue or? Yeah. All right, so we got good. what do we have left? We got hottest, we got uh, faces, heel, best faces, best heels, and best overall. Okay, well, I think we should do hottest and just run through that real quick. Okay, that can make, make, make more sense. Yeah, I'm gonna check my list here real quick. Okay, hottest overall for me, number five, and a personal preference for me was was Lita because while well, she was she wasn't. Like your standard, she wasn't a blonde, she wasn't perky or any shit like that, but she was a fiery redhead, had a big ass tattoo. She was different from every diva we've seen since before then. And for me, she just stood right out. And that's what made her one of my hottest for the Attitude Era. Uh, oh, okay. You may speak. Oh. Yeah, okay, go so, ahead. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, oh, man, we had some pretty good ones, but number five, I. Ah oh, man, damn that! Oh man, that's kind of hard for me. Uh, don't, don't, <laughs> don't rustle your jimmies there. <laughs> Shut up. Um. And yes, that was a masturbation joke too. <laughs> I, oh god. Um, I have to say I liked Victoria number five. 
Like, like, but back in like back in the day, she wasn't like. Wait, wait, Victoria wasn't in the attitude. Ever. Or you mean God as a God as a Godfather's hoe? What do you mean? Um. Yeah. No. No. no God, Godfather's hoe. And then when she came in as a wrestler, she debuted against Trish Stratus in at Heat. Yeah, but she so debuted like, after the Attitude Era. Yeah, same same with Jazz, and we put her in. No, Jazz debuted in two thousand and one. Wait, wait, Victoria debuted before her. Victor, uh, as the Godfather's hoe. No, she debuted as a wrestler before Jazz, man. No, she didn't. She, re- she wrestled Trish Stratus in her debut on Heat, and then she wrestled, made her Raw debut. Um, aligning herself with Molly Holly by beating Trish, and then they att- um, they attacked her, and then Lita saved Trish. Victoria didn't debut for it, did she? Do we yeah, look, we we gonna have to look this up. Probably. But... Yeah, but I I know this because I have her matches. I have her matches in my computer. She officially made her debut against Trish Stratus on Heat, and Jacqueline was the special guest referee. And then she officially made her Raw debut against Trish, to which she won thanks to um, distraction from Molly Holly. I consider I consider her debut as a Godfather's hoe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she debuted as a non wrestler as Godfather's hoe, to which Godfather turned heel and power bombed her through a table. But then a few, maybe like a month. Okay, I I'll, let, I'll, I'll let you have it. Go, we'll just run with Victor. Okay, ahead. I'm about to say you do not want to compete with me with matches, my friend, because I have a ma- a massive amount of mm, female professional wrestling matches in my computer. So trust me, you do not. Well, you have female wrestling. I have porn. So. <laughs> I'm not much into porn, so that's why. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, like Victoria, I, like when she was young, she had a, she's Latina. She she knew how to dance, and she she was she had a beautiful face. So to me, I I pretty much like that. So I I put Victoria as number five. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, after that heat exchange, uh, my number five is the cat. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah, Jerry right. King Lawler. Right, me and Lawler were the same. You know, right to nudity, whatever. It didn't last <laughs> long. But, fuck it. It worked for me. I'm like, she she, she came on, on on every show, wanted to get naked. I'm like, okay, huh. that that wins me over. That's the only thing. Oh, God. I actually had her at, my, at number four. So, yeah, I, I got a soft spot for her. And and, and 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 she was cosplaying before cosplay ever blew up. I mean, the, uh, numerous <laughs> colored wigs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, she she's anime for an, before anime really blew up over here. Like, yeah, okay, it works for me. Whatever you want to show up with pink hair, show up with pink hair. You're right, fussy. And neon green hair, fine. Okay, you know we can have a lemon and lime party. Whatever. <laughs> It works for me, and then and then and then the thong sting face match. I'm like, yeah, okay, this works for me too. Yeah. And it, it it was the only singles match at WrestleMania 2000, but the only time I ever envied Al Snow. <laughs> and then and then, Law, and then and then and then Jerry Lawler begging for her stink face every chance he could get. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Sure, sure, we'll put your boat with head. And and then and then what put it over the top is that I don't know if any of you br- uh, browsed Jerry Lawler's site uh, around that time, but he 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 had like racy ass photos of the cat since he was uh, in a relationship at the time. Yep. Like he had racy ass photos of him. I'm like talking just endless. I'm like Jerry Lawler, bless you, my man. Like you <laughs> you, you know what you're doing. So uh, so was- yeah, she she wasn't the hottest, but. She was hot enough to make top five, so. Yeah, she was cute. Yes, like I said, I have a soft spot for her. That's why she was my number four. Uh, One of the that stood out for me, uh, this was during the RTC thing before her career ended. Uh, she was looking for the APA for help. And she walked into their office wearing a trench coat, and she goes, they yeah, say, well, we take payments in cash or beer. She goes, well, I don't have any of those. Okay, then how the hell are you going to pay? And you see her from behind. She just drops a coat in. You see Farouk and Brescia kind of fumbled. They're like, uh, uh, those are actually just uh, suggested Payments, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll help you. Yeah, we're, we're good. Uh, uh, <laughs> classic APA. I love. I miss Farouk and Bradshaw. Uh, 
But yeah, Cat, Cat was my number four for reasons you mentioned. Uh, um, okay, my turn. Um, number four. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'll go with Terry at number four. I'll go with Terry at number four. Terry's, a, Terry's, yeah, Terry's actually number three on mine. I never, okay, well, she's number four on mine, but... Um, all right. Yeah, Terry, got a, uh, Terry gets an honorable mention for me, but yeah. yeah but basically, what you, what you guys said, like... Um, I know, um, yeah, you can get some, some Terry, because it's just like she had, like... You know, when she came in as Melina, she had that weird, like, weirdness, but, like, she still had a good body because she had the tight clothing. And then when she became um, a member of uh, PMS with, um, like, Jacqueline and um, and the uh, Ryan and, Shamrock. Ryan Shamrock and yeah. Meat. Yeah, Meat. Oh, oh, God, Meat. I feel sorry for Sean Stasiak. <laughs> oh, Planet, Planet Stasiak. <laughs> Who's supposedly uh, making a comeback, or at least yeah. trying to. Oh, he's trying? Oh, yeah, I don't think he, he wants to come back, but yeah, I don't see it happening. Anyway. I don't see it happening, no. No way. But, like, mm, yeah, mm, like, mm, Terry had a good, good, mm, like, good small body, and when she wrestled Trish in those, like, gimmick matches, I'm just like, oh, nice. Nice. And she, for a small, for a small girl, she really kept her body fit. And I'm just like, okay, she has a definitely great body for us. So, yeah, I'm not, I go with Terry at number four on mine. Yeah, she was number three, and and there's and there's a few, and there's a few moments. There's there's the um, slimy words '96, the gold bikini. Yes. I'm like when she bent over, I'm like yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm like holy crap! Did heaven did heaven just come down? <laughs> I'm like what? Cause, Cause you would never seen it get that racy in WWE, like. Yeah. It's, but you knew you knew like things were starting to change when that happened. You're like. Okay, it's like this is getting good now, and it, and it was at the perfect age, you know. You were that early teens, you're like, holy shit, like is uh, is this what I've been missing? <laughs> you basically became a man. <laughs> what I am. It's it's like it's like it's like it's like, is this is this what the, is this is what adults can hide away? It's like <laughs> goddamn, going to be an adult is fucking awesome. <laughs> Not so much, but no, that's that's the reality is. <laughs> Not so much, but. And then and then she started wearing those short tops and then under boob like mm-hmm. like she, I consider her the queen of the under boob like no one does it better. Under boob is good. But and but then the one moment and um it and and it's ironic it goes back to arm wrestling with her, but it wasn't with Sunny this time it was an arm wrestling segment with the cat, mm-hmm. and she came out in this pink and black uh, attire, and Lawler was hosting it, and then. After a few exchanges, she was like, oh, you know, um, you know what the usually arm, um, arm wrestling segment goes, oh, you know, so-and-so has, is, their arm is, my arm needs stretching or blah, blah, blah. Just to uh, make the segment go longer. Yep. But then she, but then, then she stripped off the bottom part at Holy Brother of God. <laughs> it's like, holy shit, this is, this is, this is going, this is turning into porn. <laughs> this, it's like. If this goes any further, that's what it's going to be. Because you could see everything when she took it off. And I believe the segment is on YouTube. Like, if I'm I can sure find it, it if I can find that link to you guys, but I was like, holy mother of God. Like, why aren't, why aren't I hosting the segment? Like, fuck you, Lawler, for hosting the segment. <laughs> because holy shit. I'm like, and it goes back to what Dragon said. Like her body was ridiculous. I mean, her boobs. I don't know. What, I don't know what gravity was doing, but they were going up. Like gravity was was being well to that woman. Like she was perky in every way. Oh, and did I mention she uh, she drenched herself in water too in that segment? Cause uh, yeah, I'm, I'll mention that now because she did, and it was. I'm rambling on, but why was it just look up the segment? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> right, so but, but yeah, she's number three on my. Right, my number three was was actually Molly because I, I much like the cat, I got a soft spot for Molly Holly. Because I, I don't know something something about her. She just that during her cousin 
Cousin Molly gimmicks. She just had that sweet, innocent girl next door look to her. And the Mighty Molly gimmick kind of spoke to me too because I like, like superheroes and stuff like that. And, of course, when she was a heel, it was also kind of neat because, okay, she's a bitch, but still, that's pretty cool. So Molly's my number three. I'll go with Molly Holly too because I like I like the superhero gimmick and well like I said like Molly Holly like in WCW she when she was a part of um Team Savage she she had a very good very good fitness body and like I said like before she became a wrestler she was into fitness and bodybuilding so she definitely had a good body when 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 she took off from um, her mm, became like got more fitting tight mm, like clothing so but and, and, her, and she had a very cute mm, very cute face so i kind of like mm, like molly holly even right now for for an um, for an older woman she mm, she looks very cute mm, very gorgeous so yeah molly holly is number three Okay, well, since we covered my number three, I'm going to go back and cover my number four. Uh, my number four is Tori Wilson. Mm-hmm. And and she does count since they they debuted uh, at... Um, Stacy debuted at... Uh, no, no, it's like this. Uh, Stacey, it's... Stacey debuted at, in, in the Attitude Era. They uh, Before the invasion, so it still counts. Okay. They, they, they debuted um before the invasion because they started the invasion um to feud with Lita and Trish. So I yeah. guess I can. Yeah, we'll, we'll give it. Yeah, we'll give it. We'll give it to you for now. Of course, yeah, no. it's, it's Tori Wilson. I ain't gonna deny me Tori Wilson. But I mean, do I uh, do I really need to explain that? I mean, no, no, no. Explain it. <laughs> the, the woman's old, the woman's pretty much ageless. I mean, you say we've all seen her recently. The, there's pics on the forum. Mm-hmm. She's like Cindy uh, Crawford, so she won't age. Uh, she's not a good wrestler, but damn it, you put that woman in and and the littlest of clothing and and just watch the money roll in. And 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 if you want more money to roll in, you throw her in Playboy twice. <laughs> <laughs> Because that Playboy, the first Playboy cover she ever did is my favorite. I just, I just love that that silver. The, she draped in this little silver um, sheet or whatever, and I thought like just unreal. Just this woman is ridiculous. And she, uh, from her WCW days to WWE, I mean. There's there's a handful of blondes that have come through that you can say that can uh, compare to her. Just um, ageless beauty, and she's uh, number uh, number four in mine. That's right. It'd kill me for ranking her below ter- uh, below Terry. Go ahead, massacre <laughs> me, burn me at the stake. <laughs> I don't check. Well, I didn't I didn't put her on my list because I thought um, I thought the Stacy and and Tori. Um, wasn't gonna be on this, but nope. if they are now, then I would be. I would have put them on my top. I would put both on my top five, but I kind of screwed up there thanks to you. So. <laughs> no, that's you. That's your miscount. See. There's plenty of there's plenty of honest to go around. So. All right. All right. So we're at number two then. Yeah, we're at number two. Okay, this one, number one and number two for me were kind of very very close for me, but number two for me is it would be Trish. For obvious reasons, and much like Tor- Zero mentioned for Tori, do we really need to go into reasons why? <laughs> okay. She was Babe of the Year a number of times. I know this was after the Attitude Era, but seriously, even now, I met Trish and she still looks good. It's like, holy shit, you are fantastic. Even before she came to WWE when she was the fitness model, it's like, holy God. It's like, I, w- I will bow before you. I will be your slave. Do I will do whatever you ask. But yeah, do we really need more reasons to explain why Trish is so ranked high on everybody's list? Okay, okay, go ahead. Um, we really know. And I guess um, you, um, what, Trish is number two or number one for you? Yeah, she's number two for me. Okay, okay. But number one and number two are very, very close. All right, I guess number two for me would be... Um, it was... It's kind of stuck. It was almost like a, like a tie, but number two would... would damn it. Number two went to um, went to Sunny because Trish um, Trish is basically number one and Trish Stratus is number one, but Sunny is 
No, 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 not not Sunny. Um, Sable is um number two, because Sable was in um was freaking in um play Playboy a lot. She was basically doing the grind and oh god, that was yeah, back in the day that was good and don't rustle, and she made, don't, don't, don't rustle your jimmies on air. This is the same that kind of show, to everybody. Hey, we, it's, it's this ain't the X-rated podcast. But anyway, but anyway, like like Sable is um dating number two because you know she was in Playboy. She has a good body. She's very cute and she for, come on, she's freaking Sable. She's with Brock Lesnar now, making him happy. And number one, well, um, you already got um, got my number one um, at at your number two, which is basically Trish Stratus because, come on. It's Trish. <laughs> That's all I had to say. Trish have Trish. Taste. Well, to me, well, my Trish is number one. So I mean, again, don't really explanation needed. No, hello, hottest <laughs> blonde, hottest blonde ever come through the WWE. Perhaps the hottest woman ever. And 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 WWE bar none, and has only gotten hotter. Although my preference in era is is early Trish. I prefer pre two thousand four Trish because. She lost her butt, and you know, and she she her she became more of a wrestling body than uh than her fitness body. I prefer her fitness body, but that's just me. But Trish is my number one, obviously. Come on now. Uh, mm-hmm. Number two is Sunny. I mean, if there's if there if there's a blonde on this planet that can rival Trish, it is it is ninety six ninety seven Sunny. And I don't know how you can argue it, uh, argue any other way. I mean, you go back and, and and watch her during that time, and it's and it's 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 the, it's what every man dreams of, of the blonde next door. That's what she was. That's what she was portrayed as. And if you and you know you did too, you wish that that was your neighbor. That you'd go over and borrow a cup of sugar. You'd go over and, and just ask and ask for, you know, hey, miss, I'm delivering your paper. Just just to get your glimpse. You know, like we all did it. And I'm no different. So <laughs> not to run one like I do with Terry, but that's my number two in one. And it is very close. I'm talking edge of the world close. A, spl- a splinter of difference. Yeah, yours are, yeah, you're number one. You're, yes, mine was kind of flip flop with you and me. That's why I had Trisha two and Sunny at one for those reasons, because Sunny was, like you mentioned, every man's fantasy. It's like holy shit, and re- women in wrestling at that time were often unseen. You didn't see a lot of it, but when Sunny came on, you're like holy shit, where have you been all my life? But yeah, like you, like you, Sunny and Trish, it was very, very close for me. But I gave Sunny the slight edge because. Well, she came first, and you see her in those outfits when she was with LOD 2000, and even her cowboy get up with the smoking guns. You just couldn't help but go, oh, yes. <laughs> Take me now. I am yours. I'll cite one more. If you go back, if you go find it, it's, um, she was, she's wearing this, um, when she went to, um, back to ECW, she wore this red dress, and it was perhaps the hottest she had ever looked. I'm just born, and that's saying something. When you see how she looked in WWE, to say she looked at her hardest in ECW is no stretch. I mean, she, and this was before the drugs hit her, because mm. you you could see the effects in WCW, but luckily when she was in ECW, the drugs hadn't hit her yet. So right. she was, so she was like at the apex of it. Just. Not being quick, Basically, what really killed her was after Chris Candido died. That's oh, yeah. when... It was the drugs. The drugs didn't help either, but Candido's death kind of added to it, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah it, it, like... it, put, it put it over the top. But before all that... No, go ahead. Finish. Finish. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, that was like the main thing for her when Chris came... Not, like, of course, um, she did drugs um, like before that, but she still had, a, he, she still had her body. She still looked like like gorgeous, but when Chris Candido died, she let herself absolutely go, and she got fat, and she got like she she wasn't the sunny that we all all knew and love. And so, and when she's getting a little bit well, not exactly better, I should say, but she lost weight. 
<laughs> but yeah, you don't see too many mug shots of her anymore, so yeah, we count that as a win. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, doing what she does, you'd rather see mug shots. Yeah, you, you, you don't want it. You don't want to see that other stuff. Nobody. Ninety six, ninety seven. Yes. Now, probably not. Man, if you can get me a time machine and 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 send me back there and and I tell Sonny, you can make a lot of money doing this on Skype. I would do it. I'd be I'd be I'd be the most convincing con man you ever saw. I'd be like, you can make triple the money doing this. You know this? And, and, it's, and you, com it's completely and you, anonymous. And you would be everybody's hero at that point. <laughs> All right, uh, we gave our ones and twos. Uh, Dragon, you're number one. Uh, it's number one, Trish, say, isn't it? Isn't it Trish. Trish. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Nothing, and I don't even need to say why. <laughs> That's because we've all been over that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, well, at least you have taste. Who knew? Okay, next, uh, shall we carry on? He's not as crazy as we once thought. Yeah, we'll give him that. We don't have to condemn him. <laughs> Thank you. At least not for that. We'll find other ways. All right, shall we continue then? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so next we'll be doing uh, top five faces, I suppose. All right, so my number five face uh, would be Sable. Because, because at the time, she was very popular during this era. And then they had her in that abusive relationship with marvelous Mark Merrow that gave her a lot of sympathy and got the fans behind her. And when she finally put him in his place with the Sable Bomb, that got the fans going for her. And I don't know, just everyone was rallying behind her and cheering for her when she finally let him have it. And then she did Playboy, and then she turned into a heel, which we'll get into the next topic. So that's why I got Sable as number five for faces. All right, well, oh, man, this is kind of hard for me. Um, but no, actually, the faces are are easy, but the bottom the bottom list is kind of hard. hard. Well, damn. Well, I'm just, I'm just gonna put um, Tori Wilson number five because, like, um, of course, she came in as the invasion, wasn't a very good heel at that time. But when she turned face, people basically instantly loved her because, come on, she's basically um, like the blonde next door. Everybody like basically loved Bonds back um, back in the day of baby faces, and she she basically did well being the female in peril, um, the baby face in peril. So, um, Tori would be number five for me. Oh, boy. Oh, my number five. Ah, uh, man. Differ yeah. Difficult difficult choice because um, back then, the women more, more or less excelled at being healed. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it wasn't really until the end of the Attitude Era lifespan that more baby faces... Face Diva starting started really popping up that we became more uh, prominent. I don't. It was very hard for me to try to find a think of about faces. That's why I'm having a difficult time because I don't want to make the, I don't want to make it obvious, but it's like uh, how many how many non obvious ch descript obvious choices can I pick? But uh, but but I'm gonna go with uh, China at number five. And this is purely um, during her um, her phase with Eddie, which I thought um, was pro yeah, it's it's easy. it's her best run. It, it, it's her best run. Yes, yeah. um, she played she played so well off of Eddie, but then again, playing off of Eddie, it, it's got to be the easiest thing in the world because the dude the dude just makes things flow. It's Eddie, man. Plain and simple. You just say it's Eddie. That's that's it. Yeah, but I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to elaborate a bit more than just it's Eddie. Okay. But yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, if if we did that, you know, you, you know, how quickly we blaze through all this. You know, it's just Eddie. You know, come on, I don't need to explain it. <laughs> but he he just he took uh, a a brutish woman and he and he made her. You know, um, sympathetic in a way, like, because when he, you know, he would cheat and, you know, and he'd abuse her. And this is a woman that looked that looked like he uh, could, she could squash Eddie, but he made her sympathetic. Mm -hmm. uh, and but and and she and she played off of it well. You know, she played up. You know, you know, why is Eddie doing this to me? And blah blah blah. She was a lovesick woman, and and it was brilliant. And and credit in all the world to trying to like 
she held her own against the, one of the greatest performers ever. And that's not easy to do. To do, especially coming, having to come down and play some, uh, play, uh, to uh, to a role that's, that's not fitting after coming off of like being the bodyguard for DX. Credit to her for doing it. And I and when Eddie abused her and cheated on her, I, I felt sorry for her. So yeah, she's number five, babyface. Yeah, that's a good choice. I can see. I actually had China number one, but I will. For those reasons that you mentioned, but yeah, that's why I got her number one. But because she went from DX to working with Eddie, and she just played the face really well. Then she played the face against Ivory and during the RTC bit. But I got her number one. I got her at number at number four because you know her her face run, her being the Intercontinental Champion, her being like the the savior of the females who who be like. We want women power, and she basically showed it by fighting and even beating beating men for the Intercontinental title, for being in the World Rumble of um, I think she eliminated some like Mark Henry before being eliminated by Stone Cold. She basically was like the female power, like the ultimate feminist um back in the Attitude Era of basically kicking the crap out of men because I'm woman, hear me roar, and I can do I can do this. Just as the same, or even better as you men. Mm, she's basically the baby face, baby face because for the women, because women wanted equal rights type of deal, and China was basically, basically them for equal rights type of deal. You know. All right, my number four was actually Molly Holly, but this was during the cousin Molly bit, especially when she had her Romeo and Juliet romance with Spike Dudley. Because, as we mentioned before, Molly, when she came in for the Cousin Molly gimmick, she was very chipper, very bubbly and bouncy and a lot of fun. And the fans loved that. And, and the fans also loved her little romance with Spike and everyone thought it was cute. And everyone just had fun with it. And Molly herself played it really well. So, And, of course, whenever she got her, whenever she got hurt or laid out by somebody, like she made, made the fans very sympathetic and made the, whoever she was with rally behind her and just try to get revenge. So... That's why I got Molly at number four. Thank you. Molly is number four on my list too, for all basically all the same reason. Just you know, she she came in as um, just this uh, overly bubbly, chipper baby face. Just and and but what worked is that they paired her with Crash, and everyone loved Crash. I mean, Crash was just this. He was this little guy that that was just had this bigger than life personality. And now he had like he had his he had his cousin that was the same way, you know. And mm -hmm. and she and and you could tell she just and I believe she said that was her that's her favorite time as a wrestler is that is her time beside Crash and, and Hardcore, like and you can and see why because you can tell that that's that's part of her real personality. I have no doubt that that's her as a person. I believe it. Mhm. Mm one of my favorite prom. Uh, little in moments with her and the Crash and Hardcore. I think it's around, it was around Christmas time, I think. And he had, they were all in Santa hats, and Crash and Molly are all excited and say Merry Christmas and all that. And they see Hardcore with his hat. He's just looking there very annoyed. It's like, whatever. He's all pissed off, and he's just like, like, fine, whatever. Why am I un Why am I in this costume, damn it? <laughs> and, and, and it was such a playoff, because those two would always try to cheer up Hardcore. Yeah, they they always trying to get him the smaller. Why you chip chip her up, Chelsea? Come on, not to be not to be a sourpuss. And and the thing about Molly too is that when she spoke, she used um southern slang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she used like these southern words. Like and if you weren't, it it did sound funny to anyone that wasn't deep into like the, the from the south. It did sound funny, and I and I that was a nice little touch she added. Alright, so we got our fours in. Mm -hmm. Or you get yours in, or? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think we go with number three because I think. What was your number four? I think I said I Molly. I don't think you said four, did you? No, I think I said Molly. I said um, China was number five, and no, maybe, maybe, maybe I didn't. Well, well, I basically agree with the, with you guys with Molly Holly at number four because she was basically. Um, the ultimate dar um, darling when she was a babyface. Even when she was in WCW, she was like, she was um, 
she was kind of a heel when she was with Savage, but then when she broke away, she became the baby face. She became um, like Mona and she wrestled as a baby face, wrestled Medusa when she was when Medusa turned heel and then when she came, went to the w, WWE, she became Molly Holly, um the sweet and innocent. She fought Trish Stratus and Ivory and she should have had a title run when she was a baby face. That's why I'm upset upset just thinking about that. Mm. And I think no, no, a, a great baby face run for her would have been her as Mighty Molly. That would have been great for her, like a baby face run. But yeah, number four would be Molly Holly, yeah. Okay. So uh, number three, I guess number three for faces for me would be the cat. Because going back to the abusive relationships with Sable and Marvelous Mark Merrill, the cat had hers with Jeff Jarrett. Like she was put in rather unfortunate circumstances where she would either get beaten up or embarrassed and after a while that kind of got the fans to rally a little bit behind her then when Jarrett left WWE she uh, was paired up with China as China's little minion I guess you could call her yeah, little mini me yeah mini China I guess or whatever you want to call her and I don't know the yeah. fans just really got, got into her and this rallied behind her and thought she was cute and had a nice little personality so yeah kind of like the cat as number three as a face and of course, who could forget where she won the women's title and took her top off to celebrate? Glorious. That gets bonus points. Guys like that. That uh, gets bonus points. Uh, just another reason I love Armageddon '99. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, number three would have to go with Victoria when she was the babyface gimmick, because that's I guess um Trish was Trish was injured, and Lita was um wasn't being used I think that much so they turned Victoria good and you know she she had that get, like a dancing gimmick and people actually really liked um Victoria them them so much that there was actually a baby face versus baby face um match as Victoria defended the title against Lita and that's when they were attacked by Molly and Gail Kim and Victoria had a pretty good decent run as a baby face and um, people did get behind her when she was losing. So, and and back in the day, we all know Victoria had the had the best finisher finisher of the of the divas with the widow's peak. So, uh, Victoria would have to be babyface. So your number three uh, there, you know, game of strong cast. Oh boy, my number three. Ah, oh, let me see. Let me see. Cat was five. I and I had Molly at four. Uh, oh boy, number three is difficult. I'm, 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 I'm like this one. I didn't write notes on because I was, I thought I had it off the top. It was difficult because I know who, I know who my top two are. But right. this, this one is. This is difficult. <laughs> I mean, I guess the obvious one would be China. Being the, uh, so I'd have to go with China at number three. Just I've I've already stated all the reasons why. I mean, I I love the I loved the, the her run with Eddie is the, the best run of her, and she convinced me um, that she was a sympathetic baby, say, even though she could fucking go lift a Mack truck outside the arena <laughs> if, she, if she wanted to. And that and that takes some some acrimony of talent. So, yeah, China number three for me. All right. So moving on now, we're going on to number two. Uh, for me, it would be number two for me would be Lita, mainly because when she was paired up with uh, Matt and Jeff Hardy, that they were the ideal face babe, face tag team at the time, and of course, being creepily stalked by Dean Malenko kind of gave her some sympathy as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, remember that. Yeah, uh, and and of course, her her giving guys her karanas and taking other guys' finishers as, her, as well kind of gives her some points as well. So that's when she took the 3D from the Dudleys at WrestleMania X7 during the TLC2 match. And again, that was back in the days when WWE was actually was amazing, where the women can actually take a man's finisher. Mm-hmm. Oh man. But yeah, that's why I got lead at number two. Yeah, but um, that that was definitely a hard um, pick. But I would go with Lita um, number two because she basically redefined 
like um women like for high high flying purposes like women can fly too and she proved it by doing her from flying her coronas flying head scissors moon salts and basically um showing the world that w- women can be like luchadors also and that um she came in with team extreme um just flying everywhere um last year when you knew she came in with so real but she was a heel but then when she sided with the hardy boys then she became babyface and was great went to become a one-on-one wrestler and became she she basically became an idol of female female wrestlers that wanted to fly like sasha banks when she was babyface or like <coughs> um, AJ. Hmm? <coughs> AJ. oh yeah yeah oh yeah I'm, yeah AJ, since she was young and met her in crime, because she, you were crying it, it, that because Lita old. gave her a pen. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So yeah, if you met me, you were <laughs> crying. <laughs> Don't fucking forget about AJ. She had the. <laughs> He's our queen. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's different, but we're talking about a different era. Continue. Yeah. Okay. But 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 yeah. But um, Lita's number two. So. Ah, okay. oh, you schmucks! You <laughs> bums! <laughs> Uh, yeah. We were supposed to all agree, see? And my number two is Trish. Ah, jeez. So. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and I'll, I'll give you the reason why. Yeah, Trish, well. Trish, post-Attitude Era, was a much better baby face than she was pre. Um, 2003 is when she broke out as a baby face, in my opinion. Prior to that, Lido was, by and large, easily the better baby face. And all you have to do is go back and, and look at uh, um, the pops that he, they each got. And and um, the leader's women's championship win against Stephanie in the main event of Raw. I believe that was the main event of, of that Raw. I can't remember. Yeah, 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 that, that, was the main, that was the main event at that particular Raw, Raw show. So, yeah. And and Lita is, and if when he compared the babyface one, Lita was by and large the better babyface one in my opinion at least. She was more over, and the crowd was, rid- I mean, ridiculously behind that woman. I mean, she has never been that over. Go back and watch her running at WrestleMania 17. The pop she gets, man, divas today wish they can get that pop. Mm-hmm. I mean, AJ is as over as anything today, but not even AJ is that over. I mean, th- that's that when when you it sounds ridiculous. I mean, when people say Lita was, uh, you know, was up there with Austin and Rock in overness, go back and watch her pops at that time. It it's not it's not ridiculous. I mean. That woman was over. Well, you can say right woman, right woman at the right place, right time, and all, and all, however else you want to sum it up, but ridiculously over. I I can't repeat it enough. <laughs> I mean, it is amazing the pop she gets during that time. Right. Yeah. Well. Well. Oh, yeah. and 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 just to put her baby face sympathy over. Of the Austin beating, the Austin beating she got. Not even Trish has ever gotten a beating like that, ever in her entire career, and that was at the hands of Austin, being a beast. I mean, Austin killed her, and tell me you you go back and watch that, and that doesn't disturb you, and that's a credit to Austin and Lita, for Lita to sell it, and for Austin to literally. Kill Lita, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, there's some things I can't go back in to really watch. That's probably one of them, because that's how disturbing that is. But yeah, Lita, Lita's uh, my number one. Uh, since you guys brought Lita, yeah, and Lita's number one on mine. Well, my number one was actually China for reasons we've already mentioned. Uh, going. For- doing a character evolution from DX to working with Eddie and just playing so well off him and getting all the sympathy and working with Jeff Jarrett and basically, yeah, basically all the reasons we just mentioned. China's number one babyface for me. Well, basically for me is Trish because Trish, 
was basically the ideal baby face. Um, um, everybody basically loved the blonde, blonde haired woman like next door. And Trish was that even when basically people loved Trish when she was in peril mostly. I, like when she was getting her ass beat by Jazz and by like Victor, by Victoria. And basically, she's the baby face that people love to see get her ass kicked, but always come back at the end. Like all, like all superheroes are all good people. Um, you want to see. And for me, Trish always, always had that bar, like Barbie look. Yet she can wrestle and was always the um, like the superheroine to me. So it's just like, um, to me, like, like Lita was good, but like Trish was more. Um, was the one I wanted to see fight a lot as a baby face, and Trish was always the one that I liked a lot more than than Lita. Like, so for me, number one is definitely Trish. Yeah, I didn't have Trish on my list because in the era we're looking at, she, at least in my opinion, she didn't really turn face until at WrestleMania X7 when she slapped Vince and basically said, "Okay, you and I are done." So that's because up until that point, she was mostly a heel in my eyes. So that's why I didn't have Trish in my face list. Uh, right. I, I I don't believe I had no, I don't believe I had a number two baby face. It was um ah oh, crap. Did I have a number two? I can't remember. No, I don't think I did. I I skipped right to Leah because you guys were discussing Leah at number two. Right. Um. No, number two is Stephanie. Okay. Uh, she, she 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 didn't do. Um, she wasn't active a lot, but she was sympathetic in the situation she was put in. And she was put in a lot of situations that made you feel bad for her. The, the black wedding, um, kidnapping by the Undertaker. You know, in hindsight, we know it was all set up by Vince, but you still feel sorry for her. I mean, when you, when you see her in the basement and then they find her and she's got the black marks on her face... Mm-hmm. And she's got the you know the Undertaker symbol like marked on her forehead. It's like you you feel sorry for her. So, yeah, I can understand that. And also because I had no one else to fit in the slot, so I was desperate. So there you go, Stephanie at number two. <laughs> nice. Hey, whatever works. All right. So uh, next, this one might be a little more fun. Uh, top five heels. This might be a little more fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, more. This one should be debatable. Yeah. All right, so my number five for heels was Luna, because well, when she was paired up with Goldust, and she basically kept screeching and yelling and screaming. Plus, her feud with Sable, that kind of started to put her over the top a little bit. So Luna for the era kind of gives it a number five for me. Um, number five was basically yeah. This is gonna be um, I would go with that. Um, I would go with. Damn. <laughs> uh, number five, I'll go with... Um, damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh, he's rustling uh, this Jimmy's again. <laughs> damn it. Oh, man. I'll go with Jazz on number five. Because basically, Jazz was basically the baddest bitch. She came in, beat the living fuck out of whoever she wanted um, to kick the crap out of. And basically, she was basically the one, um, like the root... Um, a very vicious woman that basically didn't care who the hell you were, man, woman. She probably wouldn't care if you were a freaking child. <laughs> she take like she'll basically kick the living crap out of you. Out of you. She she never turned babyface once when she was in WWE, except for that her very last match against Mick, Mickey James. But otherwise than that, like basically, Jazz was just a badass bitch. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, my number five. Uh, this uh, again, uh, I'm going left field on this one. W- uh, she hasn't been mentioned at all. I'm, I'm, I'm a little shocked at myself for not mentioning her, but uh, number five is Deborah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wonder how many people forgot about her. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she's at number five simply because uh, what she excelled at what she did. She was. TNA, she she was a distraction. She that and brilliant at that. I mean, she worked br- uh, great alongside Jeff. She was. I don't think there's anyone else you could have beside you could have put with Jarrett that would have worked better. 
I mean, she she had all the assets, and I mean assets. <laughs> Don't forget her moments with um, Steve Austin. Oh yeah, and Deborah's <laughs> cookies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a but yeah, um, solid heel. Um, didn't do. She excelled at what she was there for. And but there was there was definitely better than her, but there wasn't really uh, much that was worse than her. But there there was worse than her, but there was definitely much more better than her. So she's at number five because what she did, she did well. All right, so we're at to number four. My number four is actually a duo. It, it was the duo of uh, Terry and Jacqueline. Or the pretty mean sisters, if you will, the PMS, because mm-hmm. <laughs> they just emasculated just about any guys they came came in contact with. They did it with Mark Merrill. They did it with uh, Gold Dust. They did it with Val Venus, and then, of course we we mentioned Meat, uh, the later Sean Stasiak of Planet Stasiak, and he's Craziak. <laughs> but yeah, Terry and Jacqueline, they just took. They just took what they were give, what they were given, and they just made it work perfectly. They just made every man hate them. It's like, oh my god, you just did that to him. I can't believe that. But they were very entertaining in what they did. So, yeah, Terry and Jacqueline as PMS gives my number four. Number four for me is um, like Luna v- Luna Vachon because we all like like I said before on, on the mic in the ring. Her psycho, her psycho crazy. She's basically um, the crazy woman that basically dominated her match, but always tends to lose. But it's just like her. She plays her persona perfect. I don't know how many times I have to praise her, but it's just like Luna was probably the best heel you can think of. So number four is definitely Luna. Uh, my number four is uh, China, um, and this is. Uh... And this is based on her, from her debut up until um, her baby face run. But, I mean, what can you say? From her debut of what she did to Terry, just insane. I mean, she just wrangles Terry like nothing. I mean, throws her around. And you're, and you're like, yeah, Terry must be dead. <laughs> Because you, because you, you, you don't, you don't, you don't write all a woman like that, and 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 she still be alive. Like either Terry is a godlike seller, or China just didn't give, or China just didn't give no craps. Because that was that was scary, effective, and then, and then you get the whole jaw thing, and you know, it's like you weren't really sure if that's a man or a woman. You're like. <laughs> I am, I'm not really sure but it's pretty frightening <laughs> <laughs> almost like Frankenstein like you know but, but but she was very effective in that role I mean she was intimidating as hell I mean that was what she was initially brought in for and she didn't back down from nobody she just, she killed Terry intimidated the hell out of Sonny and and no other woman in that company at the time was willing to get in her face. It's like just send her on to be a. She was a wrecking one man, one man woman wrecking crew. But then again, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just very effective uh, as the stoic bodyguard. Just and there were and there were. Uh, up until the point there weren't women bodyguards in wrestling like ever she was she she was the first and just laid that groundwork for like hey i may i may not i may not i might have a penis but you don't know (laughs) but i'll 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 kill you so just back up well, even in, in uh, triple h's dvd that kingdom come uh even sean was praising her a little bit saying Vince didn't want to bring her in at first, but Sean and Hunter fought for her, same, saying, that's the point. He's hiding behind a woman. That makes it that makes it better for his heel. It makes it better for him. He's like, all right, but this flops. It's your fault. Like, fine, just bring her in. 
because her and Hunter, they were they were students together at Kowalski School, so yep, and, and it was as, his history, and she played that role really well. And uh, yep, and I you have, you have to imagine Hunter was fighting for her because they were in a relationship, so and he mm -hmm. probably didn't he probably didn't want to be on the road without her at the time. Probably, and we all know how that turned out. <laughs> Him cheating on her with stuff. Oh man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anywho, that's another well, that's another topic for the news segment if we get that far. But yeah. Well, well, um, for me, China's number China is number three because like when she was a heel, she had she actually had matches with The Rock, um, Mankind, um, like Road Dog, and she did pretty good at making people hate her. Um, like um, she did Road Dog's um. Um, Jug and jiving knee drop, and basically try to do other people's own move on them, and she basically can get people to hate her when she's in the ring, and even outside, she interfered a lot for Triple H, and she clotheslined. Um, remember when she clotheslined Rakishi, and Rakishi did a freaking flip? He sold that clothesline to, um, of China. I'm just like, oh my god. Rakishi of all people did a flip of of a China clothesline, really. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh man. But like even even Stone Cold even allowed China to look good against him before getting stunned. <laughs> so, oh man. But but China's definitely number three because China did have some good matches against the baby faces like Xbox, um, Mr. Ass, um, Road Dog, The Rock, um, that. And she did pretty good. So uh, Val Venus, when Val Venus was a babyface, and she beat him to be in the 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 King of the Rings. So yeah, China's number three. Yeah, I had China, I had China number one for those reasons we all mentioned. Uh, the basically the thrashing of Terry from her debut to when he, DX was heels to her turning on DX to join the corporation, and China was just very menacing and very scary. She was a very scary woman. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my number three was actually Sable, because uh, when she did Playboy, she had the whole arrogant gimmick. She uh, had like a, it was kind of like a Hollywood gimmick in a sense, saying, "Yeah, you wish you were me," sort of thing. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, like we mentioned before, if if backstage stories are indeed true, then that was possibly her real persona that it was coming out. But that's if the stories we hear are true. So yeah, Sable's my number three. Okay, we all got a threes in? Uh, yeah, China was my number three. All right. So number two then. Uh, my number two was actually Ivory. Because uh, when she, I think we don't know this, but when she was uh, pre-RTC and, of course, during the RTC is what got her over as a heel for sure. Because if Ivory sprout, sprouting off uh, high and mighty virtues and stuff like that didn't irritate you to no end, then the siren that RTC used when they came to the ring just irked you to no end. If you remember that siren, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, worst, yeah. worst fucking theme music ever. Yeah, that was like, basically holy, just their theme. But holy shit, was it effective. It was, yeah, because when you heard it, you're like, okay, instantly boo. <laughs> you and of course, when I was a heel, she uh, worked with, she worked against Lita, she worked against China, she worked, about, worked against just about anyone and everyone, and she made them look good, and she herself came out looking really good as well. So, mm -hmm. Ivory's number two for me for her best heels. Yeah, I have to agree with you um, with um, Ivory doing her right to censor gimmick um, for number two because everybody hated her when she was basically um, a Miss. You're not going to show nudity when I'm in when you're in my ring, and. and Basically, she was just a straight out bitch, and that's what WWE used because I think that was the time when the right to censor was bothering WWE. WWE and Vince is like, Well, yeah, you want to bother me? I'll make a gimmick out of you. <laughs> so, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> and he did it good, even, but Ivory did good as a heel, um, even in her other gimmicks. But basically, her biggest role was basically um, to dominate the match, and oh, but. Yeah, at the same time, always make the baby face look better than her, and she did, and she always did that with the T. So, mm. Holly's definitely number two. I mean, Ivory's number two. Well, Ivory is on my list, but I've Ivory at number one um, okay. for all the reasons both of you stated. 
mostly for her I, uh, RTC run, of course. Yeah. Her most celebrated run, obviously. Of course. Mm -hmm. So, really nothing else to say. I mean, she she projected um, a gimmick that uh, didn't have a lot of room for error. It was either going to fail or it was going to work, and she made it work. Uh, and it and it generated the, the best time of her career. So, and really, there's when you look back on it, there isn't a better heel uh, female run uh, than her. I mean, that's that that runs away with it by far. Nothing else comes close during that time. Uh, when it comes to female heel, heels. But yeah, she ends up being my number one. Nice. Yeah, my number one was China, so I already mentioned reasons why we've already discussed. So, well, what was your one? Um, my one has to be. I have to go with Martin, like Molly Holly, because Molly Holly and Trish had that long um, feud constantly, and Molly, mm, Molly was amazing, and she. Oh man, mm, no, Molly was um, was a very good heel, even. Um, with the I'm white as snow, I'm pure type of gimmick, and really, she really basically um, shoved it and be like, I'm more God, I'm more follower of God because I'm abstinent and pure, and all of you are disgusting. And she's, um, um, you know, it's like she's pure as the driven snow, and um, I mean, she she did very good as as her the heel gimmick, so I kind of like that. And well, we covered my number one, so I'll just quickly cover my number two. Um, it's Sunny. And well, what can I say that we haven't already said? Uh, amongst the best mic workers, and um, you wanted to see her get hers every time. Every time she got on the mic, you're like. Someone just teach this woman a lesson because she was, she was that good at just manipulating and throwing in your face how hot she was, and how and you know how unlucky we were to not you know be able to get someone like her. Just brilliant heel work on her part. Nothing more to be and nothing really more to be said about it. Can't really sum it up any better than just you wanted to see her get hers every time and that's what a heel is when you want to see them get their comeuppance me know that they're doing something right all right that about uh, wraps things up for our first themed episode uh, we got a little long-winded at some parts but hopefully you enjoyed our takes on the attitude era divas and enjoyed it and perhaps got some insight and potentially googled or youtube a couple of things and until next time, join us again when we do our WrestleMania preview within the next week or so, or two weeks. So until then, take care and stay classy.